This is ABC 15 Mornings. Supporting our students. We want to uh, make sure that we're providing the best opportunities for our students to learn. They've suffered a lot. New data on a mental health crisis. Gifts in short supply. Shortages on a lot of products people are looking for for this holiday season. Start shopping now or expect to be disappointed. All new this morning. I mean, two years in, three years in, where do you think this league's going to be? And I said, ask me in 25 years. Our conversation with a woman who broke barriers when it comes to basketball. And hoping for a return to the finals. The NBA season officially gets underway tonight for our Phoenix Suns. We've got a lot of excitement in the air here in Arizona. <laughs> we can't yeah, wait. rallying the valley, a lot of great stories to get to here momentarily. But first, we do begin with this this morning. Yeah, on a serious note, new this morning, Phoenix police sending out an alert about a missing 12 year old. Mark Allen III was last seen near 39th Avenue in Orangewood Tuesday afternoon. Take a good look at this picture right now on your screen. If you see him or maybe think you've seen him, call Phoenix police. Police are also investigating an overnight shooting happening around midnight at an apartment complex near Thomas and Black Canyon Highway. Our crews did see one person rushed away to the hospital. We do have calls out right now to get you more information. And a deadly crash shutting down streets in Peoria for hours. Police tell us a car and a motorcycle collided near 75th Avenue and Thunderbird. The man riding the motorcycle has died from his injuries. Investigators are still looking into what may have caused this crash and if anyone in the car was injured. And tracking your most accurate forecast this morning, a meteorologist Jorge Torres clear skies across the valley with temperatures on the lower end for now. Anyway, currently 61 at Sky Harbor. The wind is calm, dew point is low, and I just checked the air quality monitors across the valley and they're in the low to moderate count. That is some good news. Remember yesterday it was very hazy because of all of the dust and smoke that just collected close to the surface, which happens during the fall and winter months when those temperatures drop and it's trapped at the surface known as an inversion. That is the forecast for the rest of the morning, but as of now, things are looking okay and we are expecting and improve in our air quality either way once the sun comes up and warmer temperatures arrive. But right now, we're in the 50s in Cape Creek and Anthem. Deer Valley, 61. Glendale now at 62. And 50s as well as you head toward the East Valley and in the West Valley as well. Temperatures near 60, in fact, for you folks in Buckeye. Today, we're calling for a high of 84 degrees, mostly sunny and a gorgeous one with warmer days ahead. We'll talk about if we'll hit 90 within the next seven days, along with the potential chance of rain returning next week. Coming up in your most accurate forecast. But first, to check of traffic with Noah Lenny Graff filling in for Megan Thompson. Good morning, Noah. Hey, good morning, Jorge. Yeah, it looks like everybody is trying to get an early start on this Wednesday off to work out the door because we have a lot of slowdowns already in the West Valley in the central portion of Phoenix. So the I-10, that slowdown starts just past of the 101 interchange. Now it is stopping go traffic so it's slow going there coming inbound and then the 17 has started to slow down too. that slowdown begins right around northern this morning no crashes in either of those areas just high traffic volume north valley looks great though if you commute across the top of the 101 if you're in the east valley and use the 60 or either of the 202s to get where you're going on a wednesday morning we're all good there wanted to give you eyes on the road though this is what the 17 looks like at northern you can see a lot of brake lights there a lot of stop and go traffic so make sure you're budgeting some extra time. You might have to skip over that morning stop for a cup of coffee if you don't. Yeah, or make it at home, right? Just in this morning, I want to let you know the White House releasing its plans to get kids between the ages of 5 and 11 vaccinated against COVID-19. In fact, you are looking at live pictures right now. This is the White House COVID briefing. It's underway as we speak. The administration saying that they hope to get 28 million vaccines to pharmacies and doctor's offices as soon as next month. And now within hours, the FDA could make a decision on booster shots for people who got the Johnson & Johnson single dose vaccine. Recent studies show a second dose increased the effectiveness at preventing severe symptoms. The FDA also expected to decide on a booster shot for the Moderna vaccine as well as the safety of mixing vaccines. Tomorrow, the CDC will meet to review the FDA's decisions and offer its final recommendations. Right now, booster shots at the Pfizer vaccine are recommended for people 65 and up, but that could be lowered down to 40. Data from Israel and the number of breakthrough infections appear to be persuading the FDA's vaccine advisors. Israel already gives Pfizer boosters to people 40 and up. COVID survivors who are vaccinated may have the best chance at fighting the virus. New research published in the journal Science found people who were infected and then vaccinated months later are experiencing what's known as hybrid immunity. Experts are saying that pe people who get vaccinated three to six months after having the infection 
are likely to have the best kind of protection. A call to help Arizonans in need right now. The state's blood supply has hit its lowest level since May of 2020. And Vitalant says they need 1,000 more blood donors weekly to help patients and to continue to do so. Well, just a few months into the new school year, this morning we are at more than 200 COVID outbreaks across our state. So new for you this morning, our Amelia Fabiano has a closer look at the pandemic in the classroom and also what this means for our kids' mental health. Good morning. Good morning, Kaylee. Looking at those numbers specifically since August, there have been more than 750 outbreaks in Arizona schools. As of right now, about 220 of those remain active. So an outbreak we know is defined as when two or more students or staff who could have been in close contact with someone who does have COVID-19. As you said, we're nearly two years into the pandemic. Of course, this has affected kids not only physically, but mentally as well. Data is now showing there are more students seeking mental health help and more parents reporting behavioral problems. Congress authorized more than $190 billion to help out schools. Some of that money we do expect to be spent on mental health services. As we reopen our schools, we must reimagine to make sure that social emotional well-being is a part of the programming and that we provide our educators with training on how to best support our students. So some experts are saying a big part in helping students cope here is to ensure in person learning to keep those kids from feeling alone and isolated. The White House also trying to help here with kids mental health as well, offering guidance on sev seven, excuse me, specific areas where it can be difficult to offer mental health services and recommendations for each one on how to resolve them. Reporting live this morning, Amelia Fabiano, ABC 15, Arizona. Back to you. 606 on this Wednesday, President Joe Biden announcing a scaled back social spending package as lawmakers continue their discussions and work to get these bills passed. The president dropping tuition free community college and reducing the amount of money for home care for the elderly and disabled. The White House saying the new price tag will be around two trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. The original proposal was three and a half trillion. Well, this morning, the city of Phoenix is moving into the next phase of its cool pavement project. Crews are going to start applying the seal coat there to roads from 19th to 15th avenues and Rozier to Broadway. The next phase of the study will look at the two new asphalt coatings with higher reflective values than was used in the first cool pavement sites. Results from the program's first year showed the average surface temp 10 to 12 degrees lower than regular asphalt. Well, it is time to rally the valley tonight. Our Phoenix Suns begin the brand new season hosting the Denver Nuggets at Footprint Center. So in case you forgot, the Suns swept the Nuggets in the Western Conference semifinals back in June. Head coach Monty Williams tells us he's not reminiscing on last season's success. He is focused on winning tonight. We're told the Suns will be wearing their Valley jerseys as well. All right, we can wear our Valley t-shirts. Tip-off happens at 7. Tickets are still available, we're told. And we will be live there at the arena coming up in our next half hour. Boxing out the critics only here on ABC 15 mornings. My one on one interview with Ann Myers Drysdale and the fight for equality on the basketball court. Plus, get ready to reach deeper into your pockets the next time you use the bathroom or get ready for work in the morning. Your favorite products are getting more expensive. Shop early, shop often. Retailers are already preparing for a holiday season unlike anything we have ever seen. All traffic is stopped right now on the I-17 southbound for a crash that just happened. I'll give you a closer look and talk about some alternatives coming up in that traffic drive. And how long is too long to wait for an ambulance if you're in a medical emergency? Firefighters and paramedics in the Prescott area say they're sometimes seeing delays of more than an hour. They want to do something about it themselves, but they say they can't. Tonight at 10 p.m., ABC 15 investigator Dave Biskibing launching a new series of reports about response times. Is government red tape stopping firefighters from solving the problem they say they're seeing every single day? ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group.
OK, so our ADOT cameras are going in and out at this hour, but there is a crash on the I-17 southbound at Northern. Traffic is completely stopped across all lanes right now. They are letting people right at that exit get onto the 17, but traffic is otherwise at a standstill. So you are going to want to exit instead north of there. Get off at Peoria or Dunlap if you can and go to 35th Avenue to just get around this because the southern portion portion of the 17 is open, so it's just stalled right there because of a crash that happened just within the last 10 minutes. There is no estimated time to reopen right now. The drive times are just catching up, so right now it's clocked at about a 17 minute drive on the 17 from the 101 to the stack, but I don't even think that's accurate because you will be stopped completely once you get to northern. Meantime, the I-10 25 minute drive inbound from the far west valley and the 51 right now is a 15 minute ride top to bottom. Now let's check in with who's up next, Nick. All right, no, hey, glad you're here with us to get us through that traffic mess this morning. Now the suspect in the 2018 shooting at a Florida high school is going to plead guilty today. Nicholas Cruz faces 17 counts of first degree murder for the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. A jury will determine if he should be sentenced to death or life in prison without parole. A new FBI report shows more than 60,000 police officers were assaulted on the job last year. That's 4,000 more than in 2019. 46 officers were killed on the job in 2020, and there's already been 54 line of duty deaths so far this year. The gang that abducted a group of missionaries in Haiti is now demanding a $17 million ransom. That's $1 million for each person. The FBI continues searching for the 16 Americans and one Canadian. Procter & Gamble raising prices on some grooming, beauty, and oral care products. The company sells to major retailers like supermarkets and drugstores and more. P&G says the price hike will vary by each item and will go into effect in the next 90 days. But you see Crest, one of the products, right? We all have a tube of Crest there on the bathroom counter. Olay, yes. everything. I mean, this, some of this you affects might be all of us. Stuff right now to get the day going. It's so true. Well, the federal government is looking at giving Arizona a $158 million grant all to expand the light rail. And this would help connect the West Valley to downtown Phoenix all the way to the east side of town. The light rail's current last stop is at 19th Avenue and Dunlap. That extension is expected to be completed by 2024. Time right now is 614 on your Wednesday morning. Meteorologist Jorge Torres here monitoring a beautiful start to your Wednesday. Looking from our Arizona Department of Environmental Quality camera in downtown Phoenix, looking toward Camelback off in the distance. Sun rising here in about 15 to 20 minutes or so, and then temperatures will really begin to climb the rest of the day. But not too shabby this morning. We're in the lower 60s at Sky Harbor, but up in the high country, still well below freezing there in Flagstaff, 24 degrees. And along the rim, temperatures a little warmer and barely above freezing in Heber and Cholo, 33 and 36 respectively. On the Navajo Nation, temperatures below freezing this morning. But as you head to the west of Mojave County, temperatures in the 50s from Bullhead City down to Lake Havasu too. Ridge of high pressure will be controlling our weather pattern for the next several days. This will really allow for minimal cloud cover and really allow for temperatures to climb each and every afternoon starting today. Remember yesterday highs across the state were below average things of the storm that moved to the east, which is now already impacting portions of Nebraska and the Dakotas as it moves to the north and northeast. But for us, we'll be under this big H for a while, allowing for temperatures to flirt with 90 degrees later this week. But today, can't really complain. Mostly sunny with temperatures actually below average. High of 84 degrees under mostly sunny skies tonight. Mostly clear with overnight lows down in the lower 60s with light winds also in the forecast for the next several days. And the planner showing those temperatures starting off this morning in the 60s and climbing into the mid 70s by about 11 o'clock or so and will be in the 80s the rest of the afternoon. As I mentioned, under mostly clear skies and light winds throughout the day. And a gorgeous one across the state. In Flagstaff, you'll be warming up to 60 this afternoon. Sedona, you'll be in the 70s. And and close to 70 there in Yavapai County and Prescott calling for a high of 68 also under mostly sunny skies. Throughout Arizona today, temperatures in the 80s to the west from Bullhead City down to Lake Havasu. In Yuma, you'll be in the mid 80s too. In southern Arizona, we're calling for highs to stay in the 80s from Safford all the way to Casa Grande. In Gila County, highs anywhere from 70 in Payson to 78 in Globe. And up around Navajo County, temperatures in the 60s in Heber and up the road in Winslow, a high today of 72 degrees. And up in Page and Horseshoe Bend, 65. Speaking of Horseshoe Bend, well, we'll get to that in a moment. But tonight, lows in the 20s in Flagstaff and 30s along the rim with 40s there in central parts of the state and 50s 
to the south and west. So there is beautiful Horseshoe Bend in Phoenix. 7 8 forecast showing those temperatures climbing to the upper 80s tomorrow and Friday. Then by the weekend, temperatures drop a little bit and even a chance of rain on Tuesday. And in Flagstaff, you'll be in the 60s through at least Friday with lows in the 20s and 30s. 50s for the weekend, then turning breezy on Monday with cooler temperatures too and a chance of rain at 30% both Monday and Tuesday of next week. 617, just two games left in the regular season for our Phoenix Rising. This Saturday, the team takes on Sacramento Republic. You can watch live at 730 on CW61 Arizona or stream it on the ABC 15 app on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV, and Android TV. Well, the Phoenix Mercury made it all the way to the WNBA Finals. It was quite a run this season, right? The league is celebrating 25 years, and it is a milestone that never could have happened without a fearless basketball phenom who did help to lead the way. People used to ask me two years in, three years in, where do you think this league's going to be? And I said, ask me in 25 years. Here we are 25 years later, and uh, absolutely this league is strong. The WNBA has come a long way, thanks to people like Ann Myers Drysdale. It really frustrates me to hear even the early days of the WNBA saying, well, we didn't have players to see. Playing with so much heart at only 5'9", the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame inductee at the top of a distinguished list of players. Of UCLA. The first woman to land a four-year scholarship at UCLA, the first player, male or female, named to the All-American team in four consecutive seasons. And then proving ladies do have game, becoming the only woman to ever sign an NBA contract in 1979. It's different than the NBA game. There's no question about that. But, you know, the Mercury do a great job as far as presenting the product, uh, which is a, a great skills that these young women have. Shattering barriers for generations of female basketball stars to come, Drysdale is now a front office executive and broadcaster for the Phoenix Mercury and the Phoenix Suns. Telling me getting the WNBA where it is today is all about team chemistry and fired up fans who rally showing up for games every single year. To see where the WNBA is today and uh, to see the great players that are still playing uh, well into their late 30s and maybe even early 40s, uh, I think is an tribute to the passion for the game. She's always an uplifter, right? One of these very humble people with so much success. By the way, she is being inducted into the Arizona Sports Hall of Fame. It's, it's part of a very impressive class this year. That ceremony is going to happen November 1st at the Phoenician. It's yeah. part of a big weekend. Uh, what she's done for the league, what she's done for female athletes yes. all over, such a trailblazer. And also for our Phoenix Suns, because she's helping to build that team chemistry as well as being part of the front office. I love it. Great story, Kaylee. Thank you. A Black Friday still more than a month out, but the deals, they're coming sooner than ever. Ahead at 624, the discounts will begin in less than two weeks. And coming up at 637, Arizona first responders facing termination. One city approving a plan to fire its employees who won't get the COVID-19 vaccine. Plus, want faster internet? Okay, at 645, we're going to tell you the products that work and those that are a waste of your money. A crash that shut down the I-17 has been moved off to the right, but you can see cars are still only inching by. I will show you how far that backup goes in just minutes. Boy, with all of these shipping delays and product shortages, everyone is being encouraged right now to shop early for the holiday season. Walmart is hoping to make that even easier. Just announcing. It is turning Black Friday into a weekly event. There will be three separate sales in November, all branded as Black Friday events, and other stores like Best Buy, Target, Amazon, also offering deep discounts long before Thanksgiving. These supply chain struggles are now trickling down to small businesses too right here in the Valley. Just love this store, Old Town Candy and Toys in Scottsdale, telling us the stuff they can get is more expensive than it used to be. And they say they just don't know when their shipments will come in. The popular things are the things that are the hardest to get right now. So now you have to fill those places with other things. And luckily we've got enough stuff here we can do that. Okay, there's a silver lining. Let's share that. The store says their busiest season isn't actually until March during spring training, so they are hoping that these issues will be resolved by then. Yeah, it's a great shop there right off Scottsdale yes. Road. They're just south of Indian School. It's awesome.
Well, do you love zombie shows, maybe movies? Now you can get in on a real life zombie hunt. Let's take a look at this morning's bulletin board. Now through November 7th, Coley Equestrian Center in Chandler is hosting a paintball adventure experience Fridays through Sundays called the Hunt AZ Zombie Assault. It's completely outdoors. Guests will load into their zombie assault vehicle and then the hunt is on. There are three different pricing options for you starting at 25 bucks. The cheapest package gets you 100 paintballs or for 40 bucks you can get 500. You can make reservations online or buy tickets when you get there. The whole thing lasts about 20 minutes. I always thought the zombie apocalypse would take longer than that, but it's quick. <laughs> <Good> thing. <laughs> Embrace your inner <laughs> zombie hunter. That's on today's bulletin board. Okay, so you bring that up. So from zombies to vampires, we are staying in the spooky spirit for you this morning. If vampires were real, where would be the best and worst place for them to live? Something mm. to ponder for you on a Wednesday. Yeah, okay. So the company Lawn Love putting together this list, looking at cities with plenty of warm bodies, blood centers, <laughs> and other vampire welcoming qualities, like lots of cloudy days and no garlic festivals, right? No, well, That's we would like need those garlic tonight. festivals, right? <laughs> Turns out in Arizona, we would actually be pretty safe. Tempe, Tucson, and Glendale are among the worst cities. Oh, thank goodness for vampires. Okay, the best here, we got Naperville, Illinois, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. There you have it. Interesting. Glad we ironed that out. Okay, maybe the vampires like deep dish pizza. I don't know. I'm just glad they don't like <laughs> us. <laughs> 626. Uh, is it time for damage control? Next at 630, Facebook might be about to make some major changes to fix its image. Plus, hearts are breaking at rising rates here, and it has nothing to do with love. It actually has to do with where you're working. Slow internet speeds and password safety. There are products to help with both. I'm investigator Joe Ducey. So which one do you need and which one should you avoid? Basketball is back and the excitement is bigger than ever. We are live from the Footprint Center this morning as the Phoenix Suns prepare to take on the Denver Nuggets for tonight's season opener. Oh yeah, almost time to rally the valley. It's tracking some hazy skies in the valley this morning. We'll be warming up and we'll tell you day by day what to expect as far as changes in the forecast with your exclusive Super 7 Day Forecast coming up after the break.